You know, there's nothing less satisfying than cracking into what should be a refreshing drink and it's room temperature. Mm. But what can we do if we haven't already got a drink cooling in the fridge? And can Lego, along with some other bits and bobs, be the answer? Well, let's start with this thing. This is a Peltier module, and right now it's sitting at room temperature at around 23 degrees C. But if we pass a current through it, it shunts heat across it, creating a temperature differential where one side becomes hotter and the other side colder. So the really neat thing here is that if we can make the hot side cooler by using a heatsink like this one, then we can make the cold side really cold. This fan will help us remove heat from the heatsink, and these silicon pads will help to transfer the heat to the heatsink. It looks like our starting temperature here is about 22 degrees C. So let's give this a try. After around 30 seconds, the top of the Peltier is sitting at around 3.5 degrees, which is a bit colder than my fridge. And we're consuming about 28 watts. These things are super inefficient at cooling. But, yeah, this thing is actually pretty cold to the touch. So, what if we just pop a copper cup on this thing? How long will it take us to cool some water? We're starting at around 20 degrees C. And after starting the Peltier, we'll see how much it can cool the water over about 10 minutes. Alright, the moment of truth. Yeah, about 17 degrees C. So this thing took us 10 minutes to drop the temperature by 3 degrees. That's gotta be worse than my fridge. There's gotta be a better way. What if we passed our drink through an aluminium cooling block? Well, first we're gonna need a pump. This odd contraption here is made with a pneumatic pump, and the valve is synchronized so that it forces air in one direction. Right now, it's inflating the balloon, but if I reverse it, we can suck the air out of it. My hope here is that we can use this to pump water around too. So after fitting an intake and an output, and reducing the gearing to give us a nice powerful stroke, we'll stick the sucky end on the water and let's give it a try. What? <laughs> this didn't work the way I expected. Somehow we're squirting out the other side too. Mm. Alright, let's connect that bit to the output too. Right, now it doesn't leak everywhere, but it's still pretty poor. The output is real slow, and it seems to be both sucking and blowing at the same time. Alright, stop this. We need a smoother and more reliable pump. This little compressor will create a small amount of pressure. If we stick the pipe into the bottle, the pressure should force the water out of the bottle. Uh, yeah, this actually turned out pretty nicely. We've got a nice steady stream. However, I'd prefer not to have to pour my drink into a Coke bottle and screw the lid on each time I want to cool a drink. So, my final idea was to use a peristaltic pump. Now, I've got to admit, this took me an absurd amount of time to get a design that actually worked. And none of them worked with LEGO pneumatic hosing. So instead, I got this rubber tubing used for making slingshots. Yeah, it's nice and squishy. When we sandwich this tubing between the rollers and the backstop, and then turn the rollers, it moves the fluid along it, similar to how your body squishes food along through your guts. Then I needed to use a minor illegal Lego building method by very slightly bending these pins, which reduces the range of motion of the rocker and the pump. It didn't seem to damage the pins when I took them back out though, so I think we're in the clear. Okay, let's test it out. With the motor directly attached, and the pump secured in place... Yeah, it's a bit faster than we need, but hey, it works really well. At least now we know we can control the speed of the drink flow quite easily. And of course it works in reverse, just in case you want to suck your drink back up again for some reason. Right, well, now it's time to give this cooling block a try. And in a stroke of luck, these tubes fit the block perfectly. Then, we've got our room temperature water at around 19.5 degrees C. And our fan. And our glass. Let's see how she fares. Well, the pump is working, which is a good start. And after a few seconds, let's see how cold our super chilled water is. 
Ah, well, looks like we managed to drop the temperature by a whole two degrees. That's, uh, that's pretty underwhelming. Yeah, this ain't cold. What if we just need more airflow? If I blast the heatsink with more air, can we remove more heat from the hot side of the Peltier? Let's see. Yeah, it's certainly chucking out an absurd amount of air. Oh man, this seems to have performed exactly the same. But I do have another idea, and this aluminium heatsink might help. It's also much more compatible with LEGO. First, we'll need a means of blowing on it. So I'm going to make my own fan. To hold the blades at the right angle to create airflow, I'm going to use these elastic bands. Well, that should do it. And it actually produces a reasonable amount of air. Then, we'll increase the gear ratio to give us a good speed on the fan. And we can pop on our motor. Hmm, not bad. Now we'll need a platform onto which we can mount our heat sinks. And we can pop on our pump. Yep, that seems to work fine. And fortunately, when we connect both the fan and the motor, they both spin in the correct direction. Finally then, we can pop on our heat sinks. Now this time, I'm going to use much thinner silicon pads. Hopefully this will allow us to more efficiently transfer heat across the Peltier. Now let's see if this works better. We're starting at around 25 degrees. And after running for about 30 seconds, the Peltier is now measuring a freezing minus 9 degrees. Now that's what I want to see. And we're currently drawing around 31 watts. So I guess the next question is, can you actually freeze some water? Let's pour on a little puddle here. And after about a minute or so, yeah, there actually seems to be a little frozen block of ice on it now. By the way, if you'd like to see more of these little experiments with Lego and technology, please feel free to like or subscribe. Cheers! Okay, so this looks like it might actually work. But you know what's better than one? Now <laughs> about three. Two of these will chill the water blocks, and then one of them will cool my drinking cup. After hooking up the hosing, and making a little fastener for our output hose, we can tidy up the wiring using these Technic bits. Well, it's not pretty, but at least all of the individual components of this cooler seem to work well. Finally, the moment of truth. Let's test this glass of water, which is starting at 17.5 degrees C. I'll start by running it for a minute to cool down a little bit before starting the pump. So far, everything is working well. Pump is doing its job nicely. Good rate of flow. And there's some nice warm air flowing out of the sides of the heatsink. But is it actually working? Uh, really? A whole two degrees cooler? We're currently guzzling a whopping 70 watts of power, and once again, all we get is a measly two degree drop in temp? Man, that is so disappointing. Each component works well, but I suspect the water blocks are making the whole thing even less efficient by warming up the cool side significantly. Now this is where I'd love to hear from you folks about what exactly I'm doing wrong here. I fully expected this to work, but it looks like I've just massively overcomplicated what should be an easy problem to solve. I, mean, I guess at least I've learnt something though. If you have any thoughts, please let me know how I can improve this. Well, you know what? There is another way to make a room temperature drink like this Coke and get it real cold real quick. I live in Ireland where our water is both free and cold. So let's make something that's actually practical and also made entirely of Lego this time. These rollers will allow us to turn the coke can. And then if we make a little turbine, this can serve as a water wheel of sorts. 
Gearing it down will increase its torque output. Yeah, runs nice and smooth. And once the frame is assembled, we can pop on these gears for a further reduction. We can then use this chain to transfer rotation to the rollers. Yeah, nice and smooth, even with the weight of a coke can on it. Now, unfortunately, this fits my bathroom sink perfectly. Now I'm going to set the timer for only two minutes. And she's off. Now, I don't like the idea of wasting water, so I won't run this too long. But economically speaking, even if we were paying for water, which we're not, this is still cheaper than running my overcomplicated Peltier abomination. So after running this for only two minutes, how cold is it? I've got to say, I really wasn't expecting it to be this effective. In only two minutes, this can is pretty much the same temperature as the water. Which, as you can see by the condensation here, is actually pretty damn cold. Cheers. Hey, I guess sometimes simple is better.